If you have your Bibles, I'd like to ask you to turn with me to the book of Daniel, chapter number 2. <clears throat> and verse, beginning with verse 48. And then we're going to go, if you found it, can you say amen? And then we'll also be, also reading this, the third chapter, verse 1 and onward. Has someone found it? Amen. Amen. All right. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king that he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. I want you to take this note. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Dan Daniel 3, verse 1, chapter 3, verse 1. Many times when you read the book of Daniel, you skip the importance of how these two chapters are placed to be read together to get an understanding. Three and one, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits. I mean 60. And the breadth thereof, six cubits. And he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes and the governors and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at the time that ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, that ye fall down and worship the golden image which Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth shall that same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Savior, we're thankful for your word. We pray right now that you would fill my mouth as I open it in faith. Let me speak as an oracle of God. Let me speak as one that has been anointed by the blessed Holy Ghost. Lord, I thank you right now. I ask and I proclaim that every disobedient spirit be bound. I pray right now that everyone that needs an answer, Lord, send it down from heaven. In Jesus' name, I ask it. And everyone said, Amen. May be seated. Amen. The setting that we had, that the scripture has brought to us today is beginning begins with Daniel. Daniel has been promoted, and the reason he's been promoted is because when all the wise men, all the soothsayers, all the magicians, nobody could give an answer when the king asked that I had a dream. I don't know what the dream was. I forgot it went from me. And the interpretation thereof, nobody could do it. Daniel prayed the Lord of heaven to ask him, the keeper of secrets, and he gave him an image. He saw the image of a man. And this is why the king ends up making a golden image later. He sees the image of a man, but in that image, he saw it into four and five different sections. We're not going to go into that right now, but simply to say, I simply by say by this, when you study it, you realize that it is the plan of the times of the Gentiles. That's how long the Gentiles are going to be in existence until there comes a stone that is cut 
without hands from the heavens, and it comes and strikes the image at the feet. And from that point, it, the Bible says that a great mountain comes up and the kingdom of God is placed on the earth. We are near that stage right now. Amen. Clap your hands to the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you are a person of faith and you begin to read this book, uh, it will transport you to, amen, the age of faith in which you and I have to be living in. Right. Now here is why we find Daniel being promoted. Because where nobody else could do, what God, what God, when God gave him the answers, what nobody else could do, what Daniel did, it promoted him. And we understand this when we read the story that the Bible says that King Nebuchadnezzar actually worshipped Daniel. And Daniel did stand up like all the other instances and said, and said no, worship, don't, don't worship me, worship the God of heaven. Now, he received to prove a point that this is the divine, amen, proving of, a, of an office of a king. That he was going to be promoted, the Bible says, that Nebuchadnezzar put him over everything except himself and he placed him over the ruling of Babylon. And the scripture ends with, with his request, would you please consider Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be over the province and to rule on the outside of this throne. And then the Bible says that, that Nebuchadnezzar placed him inside the king's gate. I want to preach for a few moments today, living in the king's gate. Uh -huh. I want to bring to you a place where you and I can find ourselves, a, a place of authority, so that God, amen, can watch over us. Amen. This is why the scripture says that there was immediately after that the king Nebuchadnezzar, out of that vision that he had had, knowing that he is the top head decided I'm going in my day since the Lord gave, puts me at the top and makes me the king of kings uh, or the greatest of the kings I he made himself an image of gold and he set it up on the plains of Dura so that the people everyone that was under his reign would come especially the rulers and everyone in authority would come and worship that image this image was three score or 60 plus six, six, six. It didn't have a third six on it because that is a type and the 666 is going to come in the future where the beast will come and set up a kingdom. This is real. This was prophesied, meant over about 450 years, I believe, before it all took place. Can I tell you this? We are on the verge of something great and something big for the people of God. For those that cherish the name, you must cherish the name of God. God is not his name, Jesus is his name. You must worship the name of Jesus. For there is none other name under heaven given among men. He came in his Father's name. Jesus is everything to those that are gonna have faith. He's everything to those that want to, amen, receive the benefit. There is none other name. I thank God for that, that it has become a revelation to you and I. And so we read that he makes a statement and everybody must fall down and worship this image. And so the proclamation goes out, but I want you once again bring to your attention that Daniel is not involved in this. Daniel is not involved in this. He is in a secret hiding place. He is in a secret place of authority. He is in a place where he cannot be touched. The king said, whosoever does not worship, but he is, this man is excluded because he is, amen, he is one that has the favor of God in him. He's already passed the test. He's already has in him 
a fire. He doesn't have to be tested by that, by that fire that's going to be shown. He's already been tested. He was told everybody's going to die, but he's the one that stood up and said, perhaps the king is too hasty. Let me inquire at my God. And he went and God showed him, and therefore he saved not only himself, but his brethren and all the wicked soothsayers and all the rest of them that were false prophets. He saved all of them. Listen, God is good to the good and the bad for a certain amount of time. I said for a certain amount of time. It rains on the just and on the unjust. And here's where you, you need to differentiate that who, who am I? Who are you? Where do you stand in the great drama on this last day? Where are you on this great theater, on this stage that you and I find ourselves at the end of the age? Who are you? Where are you? And what are you going to do with what's coming upon this world? Would you clap your hands while you decide to make a decision in your lives? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The image... Is placed out there. The men are accused. The three Hebrew men, they're accused. Wait a minute. There's some men here that we know, we know they, they don't, they, they're not going to bow down because they, they're friends of Daniel. We know. We know how to, they're over us, uh, but they know how to get rid of them or try to get rid of that which is good. Listen, the world, you can live with the world and walk with the world, and, and we have to because we are in it. But let me tell you something. There will always be a difference. And usually they will make the distinction that they really don't like you, even though they might pretend. They might pretend to like you, but when it comes down to where what you, what you believe and that you believe in the one true God, there's going to come a break in your friendship. There's going to come. Why? Because the Lord, he didn't come to bring peace on the earth. He came to bring a sword. He came to bring a word that would cause to come into your heart and you would be rejected of men. It will come and it will be one against another when it comes to the faith delivered to the saint. That's why you must contend for it. That's why you must fight for it. That's why you must keep it in your mind foremost in your soul that you might be victorious. Daniel is faithful to the faith. He's not faithful to the little group there. He's faithful to the faith. Yeah, he's, you must be faithful to the one, the one Lord, one faith. You must be, you must be faithful to it. You must contend for it. Doesn't matter how much it's watered down in your neighborhoods. It doesn't matter how much it's watered down in our churches. You must, even in this church, you must remain faithful to the word and to the faith. God forbid that we should ever go backwards as a ministry here. You stay faithful to the faith. To the faith that God has given. So many are denying the faith in our day. And so, these men are faced with a situation here. In that they are going to be tried in a fire that is, that is, that is made to be seven times hotter than at the beginning. Once again, that's pointing to the tribulation. It's going to be a hot time. But... We don't want to preach so much on that right now. I want to preach to you that there is a gate of safety. That we don't, like Daniel, we don't have to start, we don't today, not for today, but today to the saints of God, those that are in the faith, I want you to know this, that there is a place of safety coming for the people of God, and it is in the king's gate. In the gate of the king. The doorway of our great God and our great Savior. So now, we, are, we know that we're very close by the world events. But there's something that I, that I noticed here when I was praying the last couple of days. That the king used music. 
He used music. And this was music that, that is for religion. This music that is for, for worship or music that they're familiar with. And he said, listen, when we play, when they play the flute, when they play the, 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 the instruments, when you hear the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, he says, you're going to fall down. Now, isn't it something that the drawing power of music, we, we've seen a demonstration of music today used for the glory of God, uh, and we were blessed, uh, and we are kept. And we are, we are moved by it. Yes, for his glory. For his glory. And it comes and it touches our hearts. But there is music that is destructive. And I can, I can hear from, from Lucifer, from the spirit of the Antichrist that does already work, that the Antichrist kingdom is being promoted right now and is being pushed on everyone. And if you would listen to your music and you would listen to what is coming out, it started a long time ago with Elvis. It came through the Beatles. It went up through Led Zeppelin. It kept going forth with punk rock. Some of you, some through disco, remember that? It came through disco also. But listen, it wasn't for the benefit of mankind. Never was. I was converted before disco. <laughs> I will have to say that one time my wife conv convinced me to put some of those high shoes on. <laughs> the vantage point really didn't change much. <laughs> but it's always been music. That comes good and then it's corrupted. It's music uh, that pulls us in uh, and then those that promote the music uh, turn to evil and try to take you all the way out. Right. Or they try to deceive your soul and they try to take you to be what is called lukewarmness. Right. Right. Uh -huh. Yes, it will. This is important because, listen, music is good. But listen, even musicians, listen, music is, is the best. It's good that you practice these things. But it's not so much that we just know how to have the music on the outside if we don't, can't make a melody to the Lord on the inside. And that's where we need to make sure that that is where we are connected to God. A prayer life, listen, a prayer life will give you a song in your heart. It'll give you a song. A new song that only you can sing. Something that puts joy in your spirit, soul, heart, and mind. It will, listen, right now music is taking people all sorts of places. But Jesus is our song. Jesus is what gives us our joy. Jesus is what blesses us and keeps us. Here's this idol, but listen. Here's this aisle that he was placed up. And it was a Babylon idol, you know, like an American idol, like that. It was an idol. And the point was to e elevate people to be that, that those that are watching would admire. And so then you latch on to somebody that you like, and you were hoping that they would be the winners of or become your next idol. It is that simple. It is that simple. That's why, that's why even, even when I came, I loved rock and roll. This is why to this day, amen, rock and roll is dangerous for me. This is why to this day. Why? Because I want to keep the songs of Zion in front. I want to keep the songs of Zion in my heart. I want to keep, amen, the songs of Zion that, get, that I found salvation in. Oh, I want to keep them where I can, when I hear it, uh, I'm not ashamed of them. I love it. They've done everything for me. They've kept me. I started out, listen, I was listening to Led Zeppelin and, and the next 
day, you know, we're, we're singing songs like, the Bible tells me so. But I had a converted heart. So it was all right. It was great. It was awesome. And I, but I realized this, that the whole world, though, kept going in the same direction. And what may be an, an oddball is that I didn't really buy that anymore. I didn't really uh, uh, enjoy it anymore. And I realized I need to totally grow up out of this situation so that my soul can be at one with him. Right. Have you ever noticed the, the kingdom of the Antichrist and its music is already blaring? Listen, uh, super, the Super Bowl. Some of you know this. I don't watch the halftime show. I love football and I watch it when I can. But listen, that, that show is what you would call the devil's church. It is just simply the devil's church. It is. It is the devil's church. But they're not hurting anyone. They're hurting. They're against the kingdom of God. And they're coming against everything that we stand for. Everything that we stand for. They even had a, a woman on a beast. They've had all, everything in there. They'd have Prince on there. I remember I caught a glimpse of Prince where he has, uh, uh, he has his guitar and it looks behind a crane. It looks like he's the devil. He has the devil's tail sticking through it. And you know, look at it. And, and I'm, I was like, my goodness, I can't believe they are that blatant with this. They had a malfunction one time. And the malfunction that they have, a clothing malfunction, is for the world to see and for all the Christians that are watching. To, they are in our face. They're in our face. But here's where I have come to tell you that you, we must be overcomers. We must be overcomers. I saw a, 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 what do you call it, one of those shorts where uh, this new girl, girl Ariana Grande, is, proclaimed she's a witch. You know why? Those tunes, uh, you can't get them out of your mind because it is a spell. They are spells. What we sing are not spells, they're blessings. They are blessings. There is a difference between black and white. Right and wrong, good and evil. But you're the one that has to make up your mind what you are going to end up. I believe we are on, an up, we are on the upward move and every one of us should desire to be in the king's gate. Can someone say the king's gate? King's gate. That, yeah, that's where you want to sit. In the king's gate. Now, this, corrupt, this, this corruption will keep us lukewarm. It does not outwardly many times appear as evil because the sound of it is so good. But one man said this. One man said this. And let me see how I can fit it in. He simply said, you know, when you're happy, you hear the music. But when you're sad, you hear the words. Yeah. And it's true. You know, there were songs that when I was younger that I heard, I never knew the words. And then one day I sat and listened to the words. I said, oh my God. I didn't know it was implying that. Because yeah, and in a, in a time of reflection, you start reflecting on it, and then you understand the words, and you understand what is happening around about you. We are on the verge of, of everything changing. We're on the verge of that. It is important to realize that there is a way of escape or a way that we, you and I have to be ready to move when the Lord blows that trumpet. Right. We're given the opportunity. Now, they were cast. 
into the fiery furnace. But that is to remind us that there is penalty at the end. But we who are in Christ Jesus, that is not where we focus on. We want to focus on the king's gate. We want, us, we want to focus where the Lord speaks to us and tells us, Come unto me, all you that are heavy burdened and heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. He is real. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. How can we refuse that? How can we refuse that? Wouldn't it be nice if, if some developer came and told you, you know what? I've got a home in Camelback for you. And just gave you a blank check. And I, when I'm done building it, I'm going to come and get you and you can move up to Camelback. The second hump. <laughs> He'll have the first hump. But the, the thing is this, is that he probably would not keep his word. But our God will keep his word. He said, he said, a mansion, a mansion, greater than any athlete, any king, any person has ever had. A mansion. The least of us will have a mansion. The least. I have not seen, ear, heard, neither hath entered in the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. But even right now, he is revealing it through his spirit. He's telling you, have faith. There's something big coming up ahead. And you don't want to miss. You don't want to miss it for the world. You don't want to, amen, be left behind. Somehow, you've got to get inside the king's gate. Jesus said this, Enter ye at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. So there's a wide gate. There's a wide, there, there, there's a wide, there's a broad way that leads to destruction. And many are going to go into that Many are going to go into that system where there's an image and they're going to worship it. It says this, because straight is the gate. That means it's straight. It's straight and it's narrow is what it's saying. When it's straight, it's like you, it's hard to move. It's almost like it's one at a time. Is that, is that straight? The other one everybody's going and they thinking they're going to a, a big party in the afterlife and they think they're going to see at least at least if I go there these great people are going to be there no it's pitch dark there's no fellowship down there whatsoever whatsoever there's no feeling no scene it is it, hell is horrible so this is what Jesus said Jesus is not afraid to speak on this okay in fact apostolic ministry is leaning away from hell there is a hell there is a hell. And that's the only thing. In fact, that's the thing that I, I received when, as I was a Roman Catholic. I had the fear of hell full time in my life until I came to the apostolic faith and realized that, that we can be saved by grace and we don't have to be afraid every day how we're going to end up. After a while, I stopped thinking. Once I got baptized, once I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I stopped thinking about the terrors of hell and realize I don't have to make it part of my, I need to fear God uh, and that just keeps me on the straight and narrow. Some of you need to get on the straight and the narrow. Why is broad is the way that leads to destruction but straight is the way and narrow is that that leadeth to life. A few be there that find it. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way. So that tells me that it seems to imply when it says straight, it means you're in a straight. You're, you're boxed in. There are parameters to our walk. There are places and things. Things that we express, things that we hear. Spiritually, you are on a journey. 
So it is straight, though. It is straight. It's more like nobody likes to be told what to do. Well, if Jesus, if you don't hear what the Lord tells you what to do, then you're in a lot of trouble. You're, gonna, you're for a horrible surprise. You have to walk the straight and narrow gate. The gate is a door. Jesus said, I am the door. This is why it is like a man. This is why it is like, uh, it would be like a man. Jesus said, I am the door. What happens there is that you have to come face to face with the reality of who Jesus is. And if you're going to worship him or not, he is the only gate. And he wants you to come to him that you can sit with him in heavenly places. He wants you in the king's gate. He wants you excited about it. He wants you to be like, you know, I think I have a lot here, but I've been fooled. I don't have a lot here. I've been fooled into thinking that the more that I have, uh, the more uh, people are going to like me or I'm going to be more fulfilled. You will not be fulfilled with what you have. You will not be fulfilled, amen, with the things that you have. A man's life does not consist of the things that he possesses. You see, that's the hook in, in, in the barrio. That's the hook in the ghetto, in that you're gonna get, you're gonna get wealth somehow. Yeah. The devil, he came to me. Look, here's here's cocaine. Sell it on the street. Help us sell this out. And you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have stuff. Counterfeit was given to me. Pass this out. Uh, see what you think. Then help us move it out. Uh, and I looked at that. Uh, held it. Uh, tried it. Uh, and I said, you know what? It's not for me. I wasn't in church yet. And I was rare. And it wasn't until a week, couple of weeks later that I met this lady, a man, that knew, that come to realize that she was raised apostolic. Uh, so I was there. And when I said no to that, uh, I'm wondering, what am I going to do with my life? Uh, and all of a sudden, just for asking those questions, uh, God turned events, circumstances around me that it seemed not so natural and it seemed so powerful and it seemed so fulfilling that I realized it, this is God calling me. This is God propelling me to a destiny. This is God in my life. And then the past started making sense. Everything that I've been through for such a moment and my journey started in serving God. Someone might have come here today looking for an answer. Jesus is that answer. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. You see, there is such a thing in the scripture called the catching away of the church. There are many that are saying it's going to happen in between or in the end. Listen, they've, got, they've, they've listened to too much tradition. They've listened to too much uh, uh, internet, or they lost, you know, everybody's a teacher on the internet now. Amen. On the internet, uh, or perhaps it comes from books, but that doesn't come from the book. The book will tell you that we ought to pray that we might be worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the Son of Man. That tells me there is a way to the king's gate. There is a way, amen, to sit where every... Listen, your friends might want to go through the tribulation, but don't be one of them. Don't be one of them. Don't want to go through there. No, it's not, uh, it's not a, a, a chicken's way out. It is a provision for people that have... Listen... Their problem is they can't die to themselves. That have died to themselves. Who said it was easy? That have died 
to self uh, and consecrate their lives uh, to serve a holy God uh, and to get weights and sins out of their life that we might serve God. And we just happen to be called at the end of the age where the Lord says, at the end of the age, there will come a time of trouble that has never been since ever since there was a nation to this day. I'm speaking to you as an oracle of God, and I'm not ashamed to tell you. I'm confident. I have heard from him a long time ago. He sent me on the path, and he sent me. I didn't just go. I want to be a preacher. Never in my imagination would I be doing what I'm here expressing today. But the Lord put a fire in me, a fire that is shut up in my bones, that I am compelled to tell you, don't wait, don't hesitate. While the door is empty, while the gate is there, now is that time for you to move forward into the kingdom and state your claim that you are going to be saved. You're going to make it. You're going to go all the way with the Lord and God will, he that started it is going to finish it. Clap your hand to him. Get some confidence in your life. Decide, I want to do this. Decide, I want to make it. I don't care what others may do. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord with the holiness of God. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to sit in the gate. Sit in the gate. Like Daniel. Daniel, his name meant God is my judge. Yes. You submitted yourself to the judge. You submitted yourself. Yes. Lord God, I'm going to judge myself according to your word. You are my judge. Everyone should be a Daniel. Have a Daniel spirit that says, Lord, let me not be afraid when I see. I, I don't want this thing to be a sin, and I don't want to study it out. Uh, well, don't. Just come to church, and you'll get preached. Then, hopefully the anointed word will get a hold of your heart where you can turn. I like what the old-time preachers used to say. Turn from your wicked ways. <laughs> oh, they're not like them old-timers. I didn't like them. I got the tail end of listening to so many of those. Stand with me. I'm going to close with this. I'm going to strike while the, while the iron's hot. When you read about the last church in the book of Revelation, it's called the Church of the Laodiceans. And he says, in essence, I have one thing against you, that you are not hot nor cold. But that you are lukewarm. So what makes it such a horrible thing to be? Well, the Lord says, listen, I want you in or out. If you don't want to be in church, don't be in church. Go, go live like the devil till you find yourself uh, without friends, without money, without anything. And then tell yourself, in the church of God, was so much better. I will return. I have sinned against the congregation. I have sinned against you, God. And guess what? We'll be waiting for you. Say, come on in, man. He says, lukewarm. But the answer that he gives, the things that he witnesses to us, is he tells them, he tells the church to be zealous. He tells the church to be zealous. 
That particular church, that's the answer, he says, to be zealous. The word zealous means to burn with zeal. To be heated or boiled with envy, hatred, anger in a good sense toward the evil. To be zealous in pursuit of good. To desire earnestly to pursue. So, the Lord says that's how you get from lukewarmness or from being cold. Is you become, you, you take, you, you figure, Lord, am I zealous? You might be zealous about your hobbies. You might be, you might be zealous about your, your, uh, your work. You might be zealous simply about family. You might be zealous about a lot of stuff. But the Lord says, that's not going to do it. You got to be zealous about me. You have to be zealous. So, remember Daniel? He would find him in the king's gate before the evil comes. He's sitting in the gate. He's not affected by it. It's the same with you and I. The last church in the book of Revelation, he says this. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. That's where the word comes from, out of his mouth. You don't like his word? This is going to happen. Then it says this, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve that you may see. So notice when you start to get zealous, the Lord takes away your nakedness. He takes away your, your shamelessness. You learn to be, you learn to be uh, modest. You learn to keep your mouth. You learn how to, you learn how to talk. Because you're, you're, you're enslaved to the world. Then it says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Zealous, and, therefore, and repent. That means if you're not zealous, turn around and be zealous. Repent to be zealous. Make your opportunities to be in the house of God your priority. Make them a priority to always be there. Listen, every time the church doors are open, you need some zealousness in you. Where you're not like, ah, oh, I'll just watch I'll just watch a good show today. I don't need Bible study. Listen, the reason you are where you're at right now is Bible study. That is what has kept you. The preaching, the preaching, you got saved. You got saved through preaching. We are saved through preaching. But the teaching is what puts a foundation under your feet. So you have to be zealous. Listen, I have sat under some horrible Bible studies when I came to church. But I was young in the Lord, and I, and I was zealous for it, man. I still got something out of it. When all the elders were going like, oh, God. They were looking at their watches and walk out and say, he didn't say nothing. He never says anything. I'm like, I heard something. <laughs> I was hungry for God. I was hungry. And I realized this, zeal is important. Yes. Yes. Just like the fervent prayer of a righteous man, that's because you have zeal. Right. You realize, you know, when you're mumbling your prayer, and then you realize, wait a minute. I'm just acting right now. I'm just saying dumb stuff right now. It happens to me. I got to, Lord, I'm sorry. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want, I want to be strong in prayer. Well, shorter, Lord, I want to actually get into this and tell you, as you're sitting right there before me, I, I love you. I'm thankful. I appreciate you. I need you. Lord, I don't know for everything when I am ungrateful and I forget. Forgive me. 
time like a beast. I'm like a beast sometimes that comes in and out. But Lord, help me to be sensitive. And then when that prayer finishes, I feel like, I feel good. I feel God hurt me. God, he, Lord, is here to hear me. He was in my room. And he, I know he has heard my petition. That depends on him whether he's going to say yes or no, but he heard my petition. Could you clap your hands once more? And this is how it ends. To the last church, right before the tribulation. To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Just like Daniel. He will sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame. And am set down with my father in his throne. You say, oh my God, a throne. I'm going to have my own throne. Listen, think for a moment. Jesus in his Father's throne, we're going to be in that throne. He said this, heaven is my throne. If you make it to heaven, you will be on the throne. Like Daniel was on the throne. So I pray that from this day forward, there's something that has happened to you that stirred you up to say, you know, I, I need to be fervent. I need to have zeal in my life just the way, you know. I, I, in fact, I have to have more zeal than I have for, you name your team. You know, these people, they dress all goofy for their team. They got flags and banners and everything. Oh, yeah. Come dress for church in your best. Yeah, this is my uniform. This is the goodness of God on me. This is God's mercy. Team Jesus. Team Jesus. Team Jesus. Isn't that Team Morningstar? It's Team Jesus. And it has to come from in here. I'd like to open this platform. I'd like to invite someone to come if you have a need. You need a blessing. You need a healing. You need a transformation in your life and spirit. This altar is open to one and all.